Yeah. <laughs> Praise you, Lord. You guys doing all the extra Bible studies, and it's amazing to see. Yeah, it is. Praying all the time, going over the scriptures. Yes. Let's full watchman group where we post stuff and everybody edifies each other. We love the prayer warrior, Renee. She's going through it right now. She's going through medical stuff. So our prayers are for her. We thank you, God, for being with her in these times. We thank you, God, for her family that's really close to her. We pray for the rest of her family that she has mentioned is struggling spiritual war. A lot of people's families are struggling with spiritual war. Some addiction, some that don't believe, some uh, all kinds of things going on. Mm -hmm. Um, witchcraft, all of this stuff. So that's why we we pray for each other a lot. We we uh, help each other. We go over the Bible together. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is that He died for us while we were yet sinners, and He was buried yeah. and resurrected on the third day, so that we would be yeah. resurrected with Him. And Christ made it narrow. He said, "You know, you got to forsake this life to find it." He said, "Those who try to find their life will lose it." So what He's showing you is that you can't get you can't get eternal life through any of your works. You can't find hope or peace until you're broken and you receive him as the Prince of peace. And so he really tells us how to fight the good fight of faith, faith all the way yeah. to the end. He says, Matthew 24, those who endure till the end shall be saved. He says in Luke 14, count the cost to be my disciple all the way to the end. It's not just say a prayer. It's not a one emotional experience, one and done. It's not baptism that saves you. None of these things save you. What saves you is when he breaks you. That's, that's how it was for me. He had to break me and he had to put his spirit in me. And I couldn't do it on my own. I couldn't repent on my own. Even my repentance was dead works, as the Bible says. Um, so it's all his power. And so he does, this, he does this thing in us where he gives us his spirit and it bears witness that we're his. And once you have that, you got the Holy Ghost in you, and it, and it grieves you when, you when you sin. And so early on, maybe in your first, you know, early part of your walk, born again, the, the spirit yes. of the enemy tried to pull you back. And this is the last days. This is the time where you can't be lukewarm. You got to be on fire for the Lord uh, because your own faith and your sanctification being on fire is going to catch fire for other people. It's going to help other people uh, come yeah. out of apostasy come out of lukewarmness, come out of the false church that have, that have put people to sleep, that it is an emotional experience, that it is just raise your hands once a week and go back to your drugs. No. Yeah. Jesus said, deny yourself, pick up your cross, follow him. He that is sticks his family in front of him is not worthy to be his disciple. When he was talking about Luke 14, count the cost. He said, you wouldn't want to build a tower halfway and not finish the building. He's, he's saying, be like a military commander. You wouldn't want to send a delegation halfway out there and not finish it. So he's telling you, fight it all the way to the end. It's a spiritual war and he gives us victory. It's his grace that it enables us to stop sinning against him. And he is, he is all powerful, almighty. And he is uh, coming back to judge. So the gospel is that he, he, he took our sins. He came as a suffering servant. He's coming back as a, as a lion out of the tribe of Judah with eyes of fire, hair white as wool, feet as burnished bronze, the voice of many waters, the double-edged sword in his mouth. Yes. And he made it very clear that you most, must overcome to the end in Revelation 2 and Revelation 3. He rebuked satanic teaching, uh, calling it the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which he hates. Twice he mentioned that Revelation 2. The doctrine of Balaam, you can't be part of that. Selling out the ministry, uh, sexual sins, sex, uh, prostituting Christ as the only way for other ways. Uh, and, and the doctrine of Jezebel knows the depth of Satan as they speak from the pulpit, straight up. And so this woman called herself a prophetess, and that led her to be a teacher. And it led people astray. And he says, you can't be a part of that. He says, you got to overcome. Even the church of Smyrna, who thought they were poor, he said, you're rich. And he said, you're going to be tried for 10 days, tribulation. Don't let anybody take your crown. And he still to them says, to those who overcome. So it's, it's every, every church, it's an overcome. Even Church of Philadelphia, they had the key of David. They had the right Jesus. Uh, he has the key of death and hell. He is the key that opens doors no man may shut, shuts doors that no man may open. 
and you have a little strength. You have kept the patience. You have endured. And he's saying, you make it to the end and you will be a pillar in the new Jerusalem. So everything in the scriptures is about overcoming to the end, staying true to the end. If you sin and fall, he is there as an advocate to wash you, cleanse you of all unrighteousness and put you back on his rock. Not when, not practicing sin. If you're still thinking you can practice sin, First John 3 says those who go on practicing sin are of their father, the devil. So it's real clear what false teaching is. False teaching is taking the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and turning it into lasciviousness, as Jude says in one chapter. And their condemnation lieth not. And there's a lot of people that teach that, that we're all sinners. We can't stop sinning. And, and that's just not true. Yeah. If we say we have no sin, we lie, we make him a liar. So we're not perfect. We're not saying we're perfect, but we're saying when you're born again, you no longer will continue to walk in porn. You'll no longer continue to walk in your drugs. You'll, you'll stop cussing. You'll bear good fruit. Jesus said, uh, those who abide in him, he will bear much fruit. He says, but those who stop abiding, they will be cut off. And so we preach what he preached. We, uh, we need his help every day to continue to make it. We pray for everybody. Uh, we pray for any of the false teachers that God would deliver them from seducing spirits that have led them astray. Because in First uh, Timothy 4, it says they will reject the faith. And then seducing spirits come in. So some of these people might have had faith. And then they reject it for some seducing spirits. And then comes turns into a doctrine of demons. This is an amazing chapter of Second Corinthians chapter 11 and 12. So I'm yeah. not, not going to rehash all the Corinthian things we've learned, except for a few of them. Chapter one, they, they were idolizing some are Apollos, some are Paul, some are Petrus, which is Peter, and Paul's, and, and Chloe had to tell on him. So it's not gossip to deal with sin in the church. It, it's not. And if this woman had to tell Paul that. So that's what we learned in first, the chapter one. Then we learn that the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. God uses the base things or the morons of this world is another interpretation to confound the wise. He uses the preaching in these latter times. He rarely uses noble people. That's what it says in uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and 3, right around there. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3, we see that some water, some plant the seeds, but it's all God giving the increase. So no human glory, no, nobody can glory, but we are called to preach the word. In season, out of season, the word is good for reproof, rebuke, edifying. So what I just said right there is the word is good for reproof, teaching, rebuke, yes. uh, rebuking false teaching. Edifying means building up into holiness for men to be uh, uh, full of good works and to, and to not be ashamed. Be a good workman of the word, not to be ashamed. Be above reproach. Paul, totally above reproach, didn't even collect money in his own hands. Paul chose to be single. And so we see 1 Corinthians 5, expel the wicked offender. And so they had to get rid of the sexual sinner out of the fellowship. And that's following Matthew 18. And so he had to go. And that brought him to repentance. It gave them a really good testimony. It purified the church. We also learned that there must be factions to show who is approved of God. I'm going to say that again. There has to be little fightings in a church to show who's approved by God. That's how it works. Because otherwise, you slide into apostasy, sin, sin goes in, and, and it doesn't go out. It stays in. And the next thing you know, everybody's taking, not everybody, but a lot of people are thinking legal drugs are okay. And, and porn, a little bit of porn is okay. This is not okay. And we're going to hear that in this chapter too. And so uh, 1 Corinthians 5 is that. 1 Corinthians 6, flee all sexual immorality. Don't even eat with them. Don't, don't fellowship with them. Because they're, if they're stuck in sin, you're, you're okaying it. We also find out that if you're taking the Lord's Supper while you're in sin, that you're, you're damning yourself, you're harming yourself because, because it's basically like you're becoming reprobate. And so 1 Corinthians 6, be not deceived. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That is very serious right there. Be not deceived. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. You know what that means? It means heaven. That's what it means. The kingdom of God is heaven. And right. so he's saying, be not deceived. You cannot, in, you, you cannot enter if you're living in willful sin. That's a very serious warning. Be not deceived. The unrighteous yeah. will inherit the kingdom of God. Neither fornicator, idolater, covetous, uh, sodomites, effeminate, 
homosexuals, drunkards. Yeah. So drugs, all of these things do not inherit. So we got to be very serious about these things in the churches. And so Paul was. And so we continue to see what real godly repentance is. We just talked about that in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. And he's saying, look, the first letter was very hard. Yes, it was. But look at what it produced. It produced a zealousness. It produced a rending of your heart. What zeal, what indignation, what fear of the Lord it produced. You've cleared yourself in this matter. And now it's revenge against the enemy. That's godly sorrow that worketh to salvation. That, that's not to be repented of. Then he says, worldly sorrow leadeth to death. So he's showing you two types, a true repentance that made the church really purified and, and the non-purified. And now we're going to see him talking about super apostles. We talked about it in the last chapter. This chapter is him rebuking those who claim they're super apostles and didn't think Paul was that good. They said, oh, his letters are meaty and weighty, but his speech contemptible and he doesn't look that good. So the, and he says, you guys compare yourselves among yourselves, which is an error. So it might be today's seminary degrees. Oh, I am from this seminary and I am from this seminary. And you don't even take the word of the Lord coming from somebody who came out of prison as a drug trafficker or somebody who came out of new age uh, with a real testimony or somebody who's, you know, has real testimony and has real revelation from the Lord, but they won't receive it because it's not comfortable to them. And so that's what Paul's saying. They wouldn't receive his testimony. The Galatians wouldn't receive his testimony. The first two chapters are him having to defend his testimony. They were trying to take it back to the law. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? And so in today's reading, we're going to see that, that you can receive another Jesus. Say that again. You can receive another Jesus, not the biblical Jesus. There's a Jesus of the Quran called Isa. It's biblically antichrist that one of these mega churches prayed in the name of at Obama administration. That's another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. And that's what Paul's rebuking today. But he does it in such love that most people can't even see the rebuke. They just want to, some people just pick the Bible apart for, for their own detriment, it says. It says, Peter says that some manipulate Paul's word and other scripture to their own destruction. But we're watching, we're watching carefully. We're reading carefully by the power of the Holy Spirit to uncover these things where he actually names them as super apostles. So that's the gospel, the best I can give it to you today. I pray it was edifying and true. Every word of God is true. Every man, yeah. And every man could be a liar, including me. So take everything to the scriptures. Yeah, Hallelujah. Awesome. So we got the ladies are going to read two chapters, and then we'll break down uh, chapter 11. I can't wait to get to, I mean, I just love the end of this, because the next chapter that they're going to read that we'll get into tomorrow is Paul's born in the flesh. Amazing. It's called a messenger of Satan. I looked up messenger. It means messenger. It means somebody who's speaking. So Paul had a thorn in his flesh, a, a speaker of Satan in his flesh to buffet him. So we'll get to that tomorrow. Today we're going to, we'll read both chapters and break down chapter 11 today. So go ahead, ladies. Go ahead, Andrea. Okay, so 11, right? Yeah. 12, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, oh, that you would bear with me in a little folly. And indeed, you do bear with me. For I am jealous for you with godly jealous. For I have betrothed you to one husband, that I may present you as a, chast a chastity virgin to Christ. But I bear less somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by the craftiness so your minds may be corrupted by the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he who comes preach, uh, preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit which have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. For I consider that I am not at all inferior to the most eminent apostles, even though I am untrained in speech, yet I am not in knowledge. But we have been through, uh, thoroughly manifested among you in all things. Do I commit sin in humbling myself that you might be exalted because I preach the gospel of God to you free of charge? I robbed all the other churches, taking wages from them to minister to you. And when I was present with you and in need, I was a burden to no one. For what I lacked, the brethren who came from um, Macedonia, 
um, supplied. And in everything, I kept myself from being burdensome to you. And so I will keep myself as the truth of Christ is in me. No one shall stop me from this boasting in the regions of um, Achaia. I yeah. don't know. How. Okay. <laughs> Why? Because I do not love you. God, God knows. But I do. But what I do, I will also continue to do that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things of which they boast. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness whom end will be according to their works. I say again, let no one think me a fool. If otherwise, at least receive me as a fool, that I also may boast a little. When I speak, I speak not according to the Lord, but as it, as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting. Seeing that many boast, many boast according to the flesh, I also will boast. For you put up uh, with fools gladly, since you yourselves are wise, for you put up with it if one brings you into bondage, if one devours you, if one wow. takes from you, if one exalts himself, if wow. one strikes you on the face. To our shame, I say that we were too weak for that. But in whatever anyone is bold, I speak foolishly, I am bold also. Wow. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more and labor is more abundant and stripes above measure and prisons more frequently and deaths often. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A day, a night and a day I have been in, I have been in the deep and journeys often and a uh, pearl up. Uh, pearls of water and pearls of robbers and perils of my own countrymen and perils of Gentiles and perils in the city and perils in the wilderness and perils in the sea and perils among false brethren and weariness and toil and sleepiness often and hunger and thirst and fasting often and cold and nakedness besides the other things what come what comes upon me daily my deep concern from all the churches who is weak and I am not weak, who is made to stumble and I do not burn with ignitation, I can't say that word. If, uh, if I must boast, I will boast in the things which concern my infirmity. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed forever, knows I am not lying. Mm. I am De uh, Dema Demacius, uh, Demacius, I don't know how to say that. Damascus, you got it. Okay, Damascus, okay. The governor under... Um, uh, Ar Artes, <laughs> the king was uh, guarding the city of uh, Damas Damascus with a you got it. Okay, garrison <laughs> desiring to arrest me, but I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped from his hands. So you guys, can you see the, the little bit of contention there between the people that, so what he's saying is me going through all that struggle is actually my calling because when when he when he was on the road to damascus and, and christ said saul saul why art thou persecuting me who art thou lord the the bright light hit him the scales fell from his eyes he fell down to the ground and then the word came to ananias that saul go meet saul and he's like i don't want to you know his reaction was he kills us and he's like, no, he's going to be my servant. He's going to suffer much. So Paul knew he was going to suffer much. He stayed like three years uh, and had the Holy Spirit showing him a lot of things for the first three years. Probably that's when he went up to the third heaven, as we're going to read in the next chapter. And these super apostles, they didn't like his, his testimony. A lot of people, like we were saying, you know, yesterday we were saying your, your anointing by fire is God allowing you to go through things that he is trying to strip you of so that you only depend on him. And so do you see all this struggle that Paul had to go through? I mean, massive struggle. And the super apostles didn't like that. And they claimed to speak uh, Greek and Hebrew so well, and they claimed all this stuff. 
And so Paul's contrasting and saying, look, you guys, I, I am as bold as you, but I come, I come in, in weak, in my weakness, he is made strong. You guys are putting people in captivity by leading people to you and you're putting them in bondage. That's what he's saying when you read this really carefully. So let's say that I started to preach something that's off and I had all kinds of powerful spirit anointing by the wrong side and some kundalini spirit. And I started speaking stuff that had a lot of truth, but was off. And I started putting people in captivity and I started saying, I'm going up to the third heaven and I got, there's a body part room up there. And I have angels at my beck and call and all of this nonsense. And I get on TV, I'm putting people in bondage. That's what he's saying right here is they are receiving a different Jesus, a different gospel and a different spirit. He's saying, don't put up with that. Do you understand? Yes. Do you understand how he's saying that it puts people in bondage? Yeah. So that's what he's saying right there. And so he's saying, look, the struggle is how we follow Christ. All who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution and look at the persecution he had to go through. So go ahead and read uh first Corinth or I'm sorry, second Corinthians 12. Amber. Okay. It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth such an, such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me. I don't know that word. Yeah, you got it. That means to like, <laughs> yeah, that basically means to humble him. Yes. You read that carefully right there. I looked in many different uh, NIV, KGV, just to see if maybe I'm wrong, but it says a messenger of Satan to buffet yeah. me, born in the flesh. So to me, He's got, he's got unclean spirits coming against him in his thoughts. And maybe that's why we, he gives us the wealth of information about take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Thank God for all circumstances submit. You know, we get other scriptures saying submit to God and the demons will flee. So the flip side of that is if you are submitting to the demons, they will, they will rule you. Right. right? And so, you know, if you uh, open yourself up to new age stuff or to false teaching uh, people lay hands on you that have kundalini spirit. If you drink uh, any kind of potions that are new age, if you drink alcohol and they arrest you, it's called under the influence of spirits. If you take drugs, spirits. So what we're seeing here is Paul has a messenger of Satan to buffet him. Now, look, he's been this happened 14 years ago. This amazingly deep revelation. He saw things so amazing that he says it's illegal to utter he doesn't even have license to to say what he saw up there so the lord put a restriction on him don't even the lord told him what to do not to talk about it he says it's illegal so when you see people going up to the third heaven and talking about body part rooms they're making a fool of themselves really if you have any discernment and they're taking people captive with lies 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 and paul is telling you right here you know, some revelations that we get, I got a revelation, I think, I don't know how many years ago, and I couldn't understand it, but I see it coming true. And, and I haven't ever voiced it. And it, 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 if I tried to voice it, I think it'd bring more confusion than, than it would edify. So I've never voiced it. I might have told a few people about it, but uh, I haven't voiced it online. And so sometimes all of our, all the revelations God gives us isn't for everyone especially when you can't understand exactly what it is. So this is what Paul's saying right there. Go ahead. Keep, keep reading. The messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought, besought the Lord trice, 
that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I am become a fool in glorying. Ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you. For in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. Mm. Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. What it is wherein ye were inferior to other churches, except it be that I myself was not burdensome to you. Forgive me, this is wrong. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for their parents, but the parents for the children. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. So the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. But be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. Did I make a gain of you by any of them whom, whom I sent unto you? I desired Titus, and with him I sent a brother. Did Titus make a gain of you? Walked we not in the same spirit? Walked we not in the same steps? Again, think ye that we excuse ourselves unto you. We speak before God in Christ, but we do all things dearly beloved for your edifying. For I fear lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall be found unto you such as he would not, lest there be debates, and beings, wrath, strifes, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, tumults. And lest when I come again, my God will humble me among you, and that I shall be wail many which have sinned already, and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed. Hallelujah. I want to say a couple things. The scholars I looked for, none of them thought that this could even be a messenger of Satan, meaning a messenger, somebody who speaks words in his flesh, yeah. into his ear. None of them thought that. They all assume it's for sure some infirmity, his eye, all that. Could be. I'm not going to say I know 100% for sure. Because he's talking about infirmities, and we know infirmity, infirmity is a spirit, so it could be both. Likely was both, but we, we don't know. We'll find out when we see him, when we make it to heaven. But I, what I want you to see at the very end of this is that he's saying, look, if you guys are out of order, I'm going to come there, and I'm going to sin by yelling at you, and it's going to cause all of these things. That's what he's saying if you look at it carefully. He's saying that if you guys are still in sin, that... When I come, this is what's going to happen. There's going to be debates, envyings, wrath, strifes, backbitings, whisperings, tumults, because sin causes that. When there's sin in the church, and there's not cleanliness, and there's not discipline, and there's not order, and there isn't an eldership that's doing it right, and people are, you know, following the word of God, let the word of God be true, and women are up there preaching and teaching and talking about laying hands on people so that all can prophesy and forcing people to speak in tongues and speaking in tongues without an interpreter and doing all of this stuff. When, the, when there isn't any order in there, there's debates, envyings, wrath, there's unholy spirits in there, there's drugs, there's, out, there's all of this. There's fornication. And so Paul's saying, if I get there and it's like that, this is going to be what's going to happen. And then he says, God will humble me because I'm going to come there basically seeing this and, and it's going to cause you know, it's going to cause that. That's what he's saying right there. You read it carefully. We'll get, we're going to get into it more tomorrow. So, and then we're going to finish second Corinthians 13, which is a huge, huge thing for us. Test. If ye be in the faith test, if ye even be, or are you reprobates? Wow. What a way to finish everything. Test. If you're in the yeah. faith, are you still a drunkard? Are you still watching porn? Do you still have dating apps on your phone? Are you still, lukewarm and going out and preaching are you still doing this are you reprobate yes. are you in the faith that stuff and then he literally says this he it's said I, he's, yeah he literally seeing with our eyes 
Yeah, and after he says, test if you're in the faith or, or are you reprobate, then he says, I trust that you know that I am. So you can see so much faction, contention. I hope you can see what's happening there. It's, it's basically a modern day rebuke of the new apostolic reformation. So second Corinthians 11, we got to rush it because it says that we only got like nine minutes left, but we've already covered a lot. Oh, that you would bear with me a little folly. And Paul writes like this and it cracks me up. And indeed you do bear with me for I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. So everything Paul's doing, even though he's rebuking, it's such a nice loving rebuke that you really have to have eyes to see what's happening in this church. It's so loving. I mean, he's just he's way, he's perfect compared to me. I, I, I don't, I don't do it this well, but this is, this is all inspired yeah. by the, it's perfect inspiration. It's all the words are perfect. Yeah. So he did it perfectly by the power of the Holy spirit to write this perfectly for I, and that's why they right. said, that's why they said your letters are perfect, but geez, when you come here, you don't speak that well, you're contemptible and you look weird. It's basically what he's, what they're saying about him for. I have betrothed you to one husband. So he's saying that, you know, you're the babe, you're the church I, I gave birth to. Paul gave birth to these churches and, and a lot of them believed because he was able to handle the persecution, the stoning where he almost died, the, all the stuff he's going to mention here. And so they believed who else would be willing to die over and over for his testimony that he had on the road to Damascus for I betrothed you and that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, you as a chaste virgin to Christ. I'm sorry, I said it twice, but I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness. So your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit, which you have not received, or a different gospel, which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. So he's saying somebody brought something else in there. That's what he's saying very clearly. He's saying you're putting up with it. And so now he's showing you a, another angle of the factions that we talked about. For I consider that I am not at all inferior to the most eminent apostles. Other scripture says super apostles. For even though I am untrained in speech, yet I am not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly manifested among you in all things. Did I commit sin in humbling myself that you might be exalted because I preached the gospel of God to you free of charge? Free of charge, huh? Hmm. I robbed other churches taking wages for from them to minister to you. And when I was present with you in need, I was a burden to no one. For what I lacked, the brethren who came from Macedonia supplied, and in everything I kept myself from being burdensome to you. And we learned already that the poor church gave everything. And this church is rich. This church is rich. And, and it took a year for him to actually get the money they said they were going to give as they felt, you know, oh, Let's give some money. And then they just held it back. For some reason, they, they got into the backbiting and the uh, false teaching that was in there. As the truth of Christ is in me, no one shall stop me from this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Why? Because I do not love you. God knows. But what I do, I will also continue to do that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things of which they boast. For such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into apostles of christ and no wonder for satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness whose end will be according to their works that's a serious rebuke right there and warning that satan masquerades as an angel of light that satan was the illuminated one he was the brightest uh, angel covering the uh, anointed. He's the anointed cherub that covereth. You look it up in Isaiah, what is it? 14 and Ezekiel 28, I believe it is. There's two, two chapters that talk about his fall. He wanted to lead the congregation from the north. Iniquity was found in his heart. He became a trafficker, I believe drugs, sex trafficking, all of that he's responsible for. I say again, I say again let no one think me a fool. If otherwise, at least receive me as a fool, that I may also boast a little. Now he's got to defend himself. What I speak, I speak not according to the Lord, but 
as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting, seeing that many boast according to the flesh. He says, I'll boast, but he says his boast is different. You put up with fools gladly since you yourselves are wise. He's, he's making fun of them. For you put up with it if one brings you into bondage, if one devours you, if one takes from you, if one exalts himself, if one strikes you in the face. To our shame, I say that we were too weak for them. You know how, you know how a lot of street preachers catch flack, oh, we're too mean and all this and all that, while, while people are taking them captive by that, you know, a bunch of the stuff that you see getting a lot of views so paul's saying they're going into bondage but in whatever anyone is bold i speak foolishly i am bold also so then he talks about his heritage he's a hebrew you know he spoke five languages he studied under gamiel so he's the hebrew of all hebrews and these people are trying to put their stature and pedigree higher than him so he's saying look i'm all that too but i don't boast in that because that didn't get him anything that got him uh, being so angry that it, by his own testimony, he was in a murderous rage. That's his own testimony. And so Christ had to knock him off on the road to Damascus. So since that point, he had to suffer all of this stuff. Stripes, beatings, stripes, prisons more frequently, deaths often from the Jews. Five times I received 40 stripes minus one, three times beaten with rods, once stoned, three times shipwrecked, night and a day. So you guys, we read this already. He's getting beat down. He's, he's hungering. He's starving. He's uh, shipwrecked. Uh, false brothers. He's being abused. And, and he doesn't ask for money. And he just lifts up the name of Christ. And he goes into, church, he goes into prisons and he gets, the, he gets the prison guards. You know, he starts preaching to the prison guards. He sings songs to the Lord. And that's, that's his boasting right there. That's what he's saying his boasting is. So he boasts in his weaknesses. He says his infirmity. Okay, so he says, the Lord knows I'm telling you the truth. So when people that doubt your, the word that God's given you or doubt your calling, we know the Lord knows. And so it's okay. And so he's saying, the Lord knows I'm not lying. So maybe somebody thought he was. So he's talking about all that stuff right there. So if you guys have ever been hurt by people, churches, doubting your testimony, this happened to Paul, this happened to Christ. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, we got less than a minute. Lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for these women. Thank you for our Bible studies. I pray that you bring more of a remnant, Lord God, so we could street preach, so we could have good, pure fellowship, so our family yeah. will see true believers come out of any uh, apostasy come out of any not being born again and be born again with the spirit of God inside you. That makes all things new. We're going to be judged eventually at the judgment seat of Christ for all believers, for people who aren't believers, the great white throne judgment. Christ said, narrow is the way and few there be that find it, but straight is the gate. And he says, broad is the highway that leads to destruction and many go there with. So we're pre preaching the narrow path to deny yourself. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name, Lord. Yes. You guys have Praise a God. blessed day. I'm so proud of you and proud of the ones that haven't made it uh, to our Bible study. Who We love all of them. Yes. Praise you. Yes. Praise yes. you, Lord Jesus. We love them all. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Jesus' mighty name. Yes. All powerful. Jesus' mighty name. All powerful. Almighty. Coming yes. back. Lord God Almighty, yes. the Word of God, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yes. So good, so faithful, so true. Yes, he, he is. He loves his. He loves his saints. He loves he his persecuted saints because they yes. will not deny his name and they will not, you know, mix unholy with holy.